Well, the Museum of Torture. I'm going to make this a separate video because it's pretty gruesome. They say it's R-rated. Well, I guess they'd give you the hook. So they would just hoist you up on that. And you would just hang on that hook like that. Mm. I get that. But that became pretty painful after a while. So this is a belt with 200 little bitty nails. And they would put that around you and tighten it up. And then with every breath, the holes would open up. And then they would put worms to eat the flesh. And then you would be allowed to die. So they'd make them hold a candle in their mouth and they'd burn until they confessed their sins. And then they killed them. These were used red hot or cold to grab people by their butts or their heads or their stomachs or their breasts, sometimes with two of the prongs in their eyes to raise them up, I guess so they would confess. This large instrument was used to pour molten lead or other devices into the ears, the mouth, the noses, the mouth of people until they confessed, doing irreparable harm. These were branding devices for liars and swearers. It was believed that the women could be cured of their witchcraft by bleeding, but they bled to death. And so they'd be cut, or their tongues cut, or whatever, until they could bleed to death. This is an oral, rectal, or vaginal pair it has some prongs down here on the bottom, and of course it was inserted somewhere, and then of course expanded slowly, and as it was expanded, it ripped, and almost was always fatal. The torture sandal put on a servant that was clumsy and tightened. Sometimes it was heated red hot, then they were required to walk, and if they rang the bell, they got further punishment. The bell, they had to walk so softly on it that it didn't ring the bell. It's a thumb, thumb and finger screw. It'd be used to break knuckles and bones in the hands. So it was very efficient and didn't require very much effort on the part of the person using it. This is a knee or uh, elbow press for dis, dis jointing those joints. It's from a school, an early children's torture device or training device, if you will, and they would be required to sit on this, and they might be caned or whipped, and the rest of the class required to watch from the early 18th, 19th century, so around 1800. This is a dunking stool, and people, uh, mainly gossiping women or lying merchants, would be tied into this and then dunked in cold weather usually wasn't fatal except for the old or the ill. These are called cat's paws or Spanish ticklers and they'd be used to rip the flesh of the body. This is called a good for nothing's ne necklace and I guess if they'd been they're being punished for gambling, cheating, or smoking uh, something they weren't supposed to do, they'd have to wear this around. This is called Jock's Mare. It's primarily used in military punishment. They'd be required to ride on the top of that or sit on it for hours, days, while heavy weights were attached to their legs. Eventually, of course, crushed all their the rectum and everything else. They'd get gangrene, so on and so on. These are flogging devices. They would rub chemicals into the areas to make it more painful. This is called the scavenger's daughter or the stork. And this is how it was used. It was incredibly painful fairly quickly, bringing a lot of pain to the abdomen and other muscles and joints. These were called fiddles, and they would put mostly women together uh, in the device, and women that were overly litigious or that caused too many problems or that bickered too much. You can see here how it's used, except there are two women tied together here. It's water torture, and this, they would hold their nose shut and 
force water down into their bodies. And eventually the bodies would become uh, engorged and then they would turn them upside down and whip them until the fluids came out. This is called the heretic's fork. Person one allowed them, they couldn't move their head except to just barely speak, I repent. This is a hanging cage. It's a hunting jacket. It was worn so that the bears couldn't claw them or hug them. This is called Gaylor's uh, pole arms. And so they would reach out into a bunch of prisoners to grab one to pull them out with this. And they say it's still used in prisons today in undeveloped parts of the world. A flogger with stars on the end. A stoning mask. This is called the corrote. And the prisoner or person would sit on the seat, clamped around the neck. And then this would be, or around their body, I'm not sure, neck or body, and this would go into either their throat or their vertebrae. This is called the Iron Maiden of Nuremberg. People would be closed in it, of course, slowly. It usually took them several days to die. An interrogation chair. A bellows used for burning of the feet. The entrance into the lower level of the torture museum. It's indeed a sad and gruesome place. A dagger crucifix. So the dagger would fit down inside the crucifix. A head crusher. Wow, I don't know what's the most gruesome. In this particular case, the victim was tied upside down and then this huge saw was used to cut him down the middle. An executioner's mask. 